How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle session. Today we're having two battles and the first battle is versus Farner from the Discord server in the OU tier. Go ahead and join the Discord server, it's the best place to go for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battles right now. There is a link in the description down below. Let me know who you think is going to win in the comment section down below. And with that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun Farner. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. They're going to lead off with Swampert, nice and shiny, as we lead off with our Infernape. So, not the best matchup for us, straight up, but we are True Scarfed, and even if we weren't, it's going to be fine. We can just U-turn straight away. But before we do start, if you want to see more high-quality daily Pokemon Wi-Fi battles like this one, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And with that being said, let's go for a U-turn real quick, get on out of there. They probably go for a Stealth Rocks, if I had to guess. Um, that's not very effective, so that is actually the Zoroark, which is a really good lead for them, because I... I wouldn't have gone for a Flare Blitz or a Close Combat there. And if I did go for a Close Combat, they would definitely have my Infernapes like six feet under already. So um, these things are usually special. So I'm going to go into Pre-Marina right now. There we go. Pre-Marina is coming through. And we should be able to take any hit this Zoroark throws at us as they do go for a Trick. So we're going to Trick them the Assault Vest. Well, they're going to Trick us and they're going to get the Assault Vest. And uh, we get a pair of Choice Specs. So our Pre-Marina is now a big threat to their entire team. Um, and I'm looking at their team and I'm thinking we could go for a Surf or a Moonblast here. What do they do? Um, I say they have to guess. They have to guess what we're going to do. So I think we just go for the, the Moonblast. I think the Moonblast is the best one to go for. So I'm going to go for it. They go for a Grass Knot, which shouldn't do too much damage to us. It doesn't. We're not that heavy. As we go for a Moonblast now. And that is definitely going to take out the Zoroark. Because we are Choice Specs now. Even with the Assault Vest, there's no chance in heck that they're going to live that. So... Zoroark tricked us with choice specs, and now our Primarina is unstoppable, which is amazing. But now that they know that we're locked into a fairy move, they can freely go into their nice and shiny Entei. Gotta love it. Exert some pressure, and now we basically have to switch out because this thing could do anything to hey, us. Um, what's the best Pokemon to go into, though? I'd say probably Flygon or Infernape. Flygon more so, so I'm going to go into Flygon real quick. So there we go. We're going to withdraw Primarina into the Flygon. Flygon can take any hit this thing wants to throw at us. Um, unless they go for a crunch, which I doubt they would do against the Pre-Marina. But they go for a Stone Edge. And that's going to miss. But it doesn't matter because it wouldn't have done too much damage anyway. So now we're in a pretty good position where we could go for a Fire Punch expecting a Skarmory to come in. Get some damage off there. Or we can go for a Dragon Dance. Dragon Dance or Fire Punch. I'm going to go for the Fire Punch. They do withdraw the Entei. Are they going to go Swampert though? They could go Swampert, I guess, as well. I think Flygon. Uh, Latias. Latias also... Immune to Earthquake. So they bring the Latias in. We go for a Fire Punch. Why is our Flygon so much bigger than Latias? I said Latios a minute ago, didn't I? I didn't mean to. Um, anyway, anyway, anyway. This thing, we can go into Magnezone now. Magnezone can wall Latias to the end of the Earth. If they are a Carmine Storm power set, we're going to have to deal with it swiftly. So we're going to go into our Magnezone now. They do go for the Calm Mind, which is very unfortunate for us. However... I'm confident that if we go ahead and blast this thing with a flash cannon, it's going to do a lot of damage. And it might do, because we're going to go last. So we may as well go for it. Let's go for the flash cannon. We might get a special defense drop as well, which would be really cool. So they withdraw the Latias. What are they going to go into? Swampert? Probably, right? Probably Swampert. Yeah, the Swampert comes in. That's a good switch. They didn't want to... I was expecting them to stay in a little bit because they had the car mined up. But no, no, no staying in. We go for a Choice Specs Analytic Boosted Flash Cannon. It does a decent bit of chip damage. Um, and it does reveal that they are a leftover Swampert, which is good to know. So, what's our best switch into a Swampert? They could go for a Stealth Rocks, or they could go for, go for pretty much anything, really. Um, if we assume they're going to go for an EQ, we should go to Corviknight. I think we're going to Corviknight anyway, because they're either going to Stealth Rocks, Earthquake, or Flip Turn. If they Flip Turn, we're going to get some Rocky Helmet Chip, which would be nice. The Stealth Rock, we can Defog, etc, etc, etc. So, let's go Corviknight, Silvera, like so. They do go for the Stealth Rocks, so we can get rid of them straight away with the Defog. It does give them a free switch into Entei, though. That's the only downside. Um, so we could, in theory... Uh, if we can get Latia, if we can get Primarina in, it gets a KO straight away. Let's Defog. Let's Defog. Um, right away. So they go for a Flip Turn, which is fine. That's going to do no damage to us, but it gets some Rocky Helmet Chip on the Swampert. And then we'll go for a Defog on whatever Pokemon they bring in next. I'm guessing they're going to bring Entei in. If I had to guess, I'd say Entei. So Entei does come in, which is amazing. There it is. The Entei is here. Um, we get the pressure exerted, which doesn't really matter. And then we go for a Defog to get rid of those hazards, um, which is very important for us. Very important for us. So, 
what do we do here? Do we go for that U-turn? Are they going to expect the Flygon and go for something else? I don't know. I think I risk it and go for a U-turn so that we can get a free switch in. They do go for the Sacred Fire, which is unfortunately going to nearly take us out. It does burn us as well, so we have no chance of keeping Corviknight around. We go for the U-turn, though. At least we get a free switch in with Primarina right now, which is going to be really important. So... I'm assuming they're not. I'm assuming they're either choice banded or something. They must be choice banded, because that sacred fire did way too much to a physically defensive Corviknight. Way too much damage. So do we go pre marina? I think we go pre marina. I think we go pre marina. To be honest with you. So there we go. Pre marina comes in like so, and then we'll go straight for a surf. There's no reason not to go for a surf unless they terra normal. Uh, in which case, we can still go for a surf. So they withdraw the Entei. What are they going to go into? Latias or Skarmory? One of the two, right? Swampert. How well is Swampert going to take a choice spec Surf from Primarina? That's the real question. If we can get rid of the Swampert, Stealth Rocks will be gone for good. Okay, that didn't do as, mu as much damage as I wanted it to. That's for sure. I'm assuming they're not Speed invest but Invested. So there is a good chance they go for a Stealth Rocks here. So I'm going to go for another Surf here. They go for the Stealth Rocks as I expected. They get those Rocks up, which is really unfortunate for us. Um, but at the same time, it's not the end of the world. We, we may have lost Corviknight, but we still have the Mora with the Mortal Spin. So we'll go for a surf take out that swamp pit. Primarina putting in the work with the unintended item. Because that wouldn't have two shotted the swamp pit if we weren't choice specs, that's for sure. So in comes the Latty Ass. Gets a free calm mind up, which is unfortunate. Um I'm assuming this put a stored power, so we might actually be alright here. So I'm thinking of going Glimora or sacking off Corviknight here. I think I will sack off Corviknight here. May as well. Then we get a free switching on the Latias with something else. So let's go Silvera like so. There we go. Get Do down to the Stealth Rocks, which is all well and good. And then what we'll do is we'll go back into Pre Marina and we'll go for a Moon Blast. I'm pretty confident Pre Marina can take a stored power at just one car mind. And um, that's provided they're stored power. They could be size shock for all I know. Um, I doubt it though. They're normally stored power with like Draco Meteor or Dragon Pulse or something, which doesn't affect Pre Marina. So let's go back into Pre Marina, Monroe over here. There we go. Nice and shiny as usual. <laughs> uh, we do get some stuff for a chip, but I'm pretty confident we can take a hit from this thing at plus one. So I'm going to go for a Moonblast right now. And they either have to Terra, which means we force them to Terra, which would be great, or they try and take it like a champ. So they are going to Terrestrialize. What type are they going to terrestrialize into, though? That's the real question. If it's fairy, we might still have a good chance of doing some damage. It is fairy. So we can now hit this thing with a flare blitz from Infernate, which is great. So Latias does go for the Terra Fairy. Let's see what happens here. And um, they go for that Mist Ball at plus one. Does, it in fact, KO us. So they didn't have store power. They had Mist Ball, which is unfortunate. Um, so that means they didn't even need to Terra there. Um, what this does mean, though, is that we can now go safely into Authority, the Magna Zone. We can go for that Flash Cannon. They probably have to switch out into Entei here. So I'm going to go for a Vault Switch, expecting them to switch out, because there's no way they're going to stay here and try and take a um, Flash Cannon to the face from a Choice Spect Analytic Magna Zone. They do withdraw the Latia, saving it for later, and they do, in fact, go into Skarmory, Expecting the Flash Cannon. That's a risky play right there. As we go for a Vault Switch. And that's going to definitely take them down sturdy. Which is amazing. So with the Skarmory severely injured. We're doing a very good with Magnezone as well. Magnezone's putting in the work. Um, as well as Pre Marina did. So Pre Marina did really well like the first game. Now, it's a contender for the thumbnail that's for sure. So um, with Skarmory out of the way. What do we do now? I'm leaning towards getting my Stealth Rocks up. To hit that Entei. And by doing that, I go into Glamora. I think I will go Glamora because um, we could also go for a Power Gem here, which will in fact KO the Skarmory. And it also means that they pretty much have to go into the... Um... I think we go for a Power Gem. I really think we go for a Power Gem. There we go. Because otherwise, they're going to go for a Roost, which Skarmory gets Roost. It just doesn't get Defog, I don't think. So Skarmory does go down, which is amazing, to the Glamora. However, this gives them a free switch into Latias. However, however, however... We get to go for a Mortal Spin. So there's the Latia. So they've got a couple of options. They can either Calm Mind it up or they can go for a straight up Learn Mist Ball. I'm going to go for that Mortal Spin just in case they Calm Mind. But they do go for the Mist Ball, which is going to KO us, unfortunately, as uh, down goes Glimora. So there we go. We are we were more of an offensive orientated um, Glimora, which is why we definitely couldn't take that. So now that it's uh, here, let's go for a Magnezone Switch. And now 
They probably expect us to do the Vault Switch again. And they probably stay in in Calm Mind. So I'm going to go for a Flash Cannon. I think that is the way to go. Because even if the Entei comes in, we can still get that Flash Cannon off, which is going to be amazing. They do withdraw the Latias. Which one are they going to go into, though? Probably the Entei, if I had to guess. Uh, Entei does come in, which is great for them. So Entei is here. The Entei is here. We get the pressure on us, which is unfortunate. We go for a Flash Cannon, though. This should definitely do some nice chip damage, the Entei. As it actually does half, which is really impressive damage. Um, I definitely don't want to go into Infernape here. Or do I? No, I want to go Flygon. Flygon can definitely handle this thing. So we'll go Flygon real quick. There we go. Switching into Flygon is going to be for the best. Bring all goggles in. Like so. Pointer stones do dig in, but it doesn't really matter. They go for a sacred fire. And as long as they don't get the burn on us, we should be alright. They do get the burn though. They do get the burn. Of course they get the burn. They get the burn on the Corbinate, they get the burn on the Flygon. It's like whatever. Anyway, this Entei is probably gonna stay in and attack us right now. So I'm gonna go for that EQ. And um, if they do Latias, we can just switch straight out into our Magnezone. They do switch out. And they go into what? The Latias? The Latias again. So the Latias comes in. Makes sense. Flygon's pretty much useless at this point. Um, but I don't want this being set up loads of car mines. That's for sure. And um, so I am going to have to hard switch into Magnazone here. So they more than likely go for an attacking move. They, they know we can't touch them. That's, that's for sure. So um, let's go for Magnazone switch. Magnazone switch. They do withdraw the Latias. They make a double back into Entei. Yeah, they went back into Entei. Those sods. Those absolute sods. That is really bad for us. As we withdrawed into our Magnazone. So we've got a couple of options here. We have got a couple of options here. So the one option is them Magnazone. I say we go back into Flygon. Sack Flygon off and then close combat this thing with Infernape. That's one way around it. Um, alternatively, we could be ballsy and predict the... No, they definitely go for a Sacred Fire because it still KOs Flygon. So we'll go back into Flygon like so. Go back into Flygon like so. Let it go down to a Sacred Fire because they're definitely banded. They're definitely banded. And they go for that Sacred Fire. They don't miss, which is great. Down goes Flygon. So Flygon didn't get to do squat this game. That Latias just completely walled it, which is unfortunate. Um, now, though, we might have to change up our game plan. So I think we're going to have to... We have to go Infernape here. We have to go Infernape here. Sun Wukong. Point of Stones do dig in, which is unfortunate. And I'm going to go straight for a close combat. Do I Terra? Do I need Terra Flying for anything? No, I might need Terra Flying for the Iron Valley on Magna Zone. Let's just go straight for a close combat here. They might not expect this. They might, they might expect us to go for a U-turn, expecting them to switch into Latias. Because the Latias switch is pretty obvious. Um, but if they don't, then they don't. But I, I really think they're locked in here. So they do withdraw the Entei. What are they going to go into? The Latias? Probably, yeah. The Latias comes in. So do we switch back into Magnazone here? Because they're going to expect that, right? It's pretty obvious that's what we're going to do. That, that close combat did some decent damage, to be fair. Um... Do they expect... I, I think they expect us to predict them to go into Entagon because they made the double earlier and usually people don't make the double twice in a row. So I am going to go back into my Magna Zone. And I'm really hoping they don't double again. Because if we can get this Flash Cannon off, then we are golden. If we can get this Flash Cannon off, then we are golden. They do go for a Mist Ball, which isn't going to do too much damage to us. There we go. It should lower our special defense though. Oh, it doesn't though. That's great. So now... Now... We go for a Flash Cannon again because it will KO the Entei on the switch in because we already showed earlier that it did the amount of damage that it needed to do. So they go for a Draining Kiss. They are either expecting the end, the, uh, well, they probably just want to get some health back so they can take this Flash Cannon a bit better. But unfortunately for them, Choice Specs Analytic Boosted Flash Cannon from a Magnet Zone to an unboosted Latias is definitely going to KO, especially with it being Terra Fairy. Um, so that is down goes the Latias, which is amazing. So we managed to just pull through... Just pull through, which is great. So now, we could still use N uh, Magnazone for the Entei. So Entei comes in. Not for the Entei. We could use it for the um, Iron Valiant. That's that's what I meant to say. Um, so um, can we though? Because they'll probably go for a close combat with the Iron Valiant on the uh, Magnazone, right? So is it better for us to... We, we have to go into Infernape here. I think we have to go Infernape here because they definitely go for a Sacred Fire. And um, we definitely go... For, yeah, so Sun Wukong comes in. 
like so. Pointer stones do dig in. They go for the sacred fire. It won't KO Infernape. That's for sure. Now, do we go for a flare blitz expecting them to go into the Iron Valiant, or do we go for a close combat for the KO? I think we go for the close combat for the KO. I think it's the obvious move. I think we have to. We have to go for the KO. There we go. They stayed in, which is great. Down goes the Entei, which is fantastic. Now all we have to do is let the Iron Valiant take out Infernape, go into my Magna Zone, go for the Terror Flying, and hope that the Terror Flying resistance to fighting is enough to take an Aura Sphere or a close combat, which I have a feeling it won't be. But it's our best shot of beating this Iron Valiant right now because it's got that booster energy in its speed, um, I'm assuming. Yeah, speed is there it is. There we go. Um, so we definitely don't outspeed here. So let's go for a close combat just in case. Um, we can. I mean, they, they might be modest or adamant. They don't. They go for a close combat, which is definitely going to KO the Infernape. So Infernape does go down, um, which is great and all. This is actually a really intense game. I'm really enjoying this one. So Infernape goes down. Infernape goes down. And now it all comes down to Magnezone. This could actually be a Magnezone game. So it really depends on whether Magnezone can take this close combat or not with Terra Flying. So let's go for it. Let's go for the Flash Cannon with the Terra... No, let's go for the Terra Blast because they haven't terra yet. So we can go for the Terra Blast with Terra Flying. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's hope and pray that they go for a close combat first and foremost and that it doesn't KO because of the resistance and Magnezone's naturally high defense stat. I'm really hoping that, and we are a bulky Magna Zone with no speed investment, so we've got a lot of HP, well, for a Magna Zone. Um, so they go for the close combat, can we live? We don't, unfortunately, as Iron Valiant does take us down. And that was a really close game, I really enjoyed that one, Farner, that was a pretty good one. Um, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but GG, that was a solid game. On to the next one. Okay, the next battle we've got is against AG from the Discord server in the OU tier once again. They haven't really got an OU team. They've got a pretty mixed team. Um, I'd say it was UU or even RU. I uh, know UU because of Skeledurge. Um, but it's still, it could be a challenge for us. Um, you never know that Cloritza hits very hard on the special side. Skeledurge, as we know, is a bulky monster. Lycanroc could be the Endeavor set. We've got to watch out for that. And Gudra is very specially defensive. Um, the other two... I'm not really bothered about, but <laughs> um, if we assume they're going to lead off with Lycanroc, we should go ahead with, accordingly with the Flygon, maybe. So with that being said, let's get straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck. Have fun, AG. I can't pronounce your Discord name. I'm sorry, but they lead off with Squawk ability as we lead off with Flygon. So it's Flyer versus Flyer. Look at the size difference. They get the Intimidate off, which is a really good set um, to lead off with against our Flygon, that's for sure. So this thing could be special. It could be physical. Um, I'm going to go into Corviknight, my own bird. Um, because Corviknight pretty much walls this thing to the ends of Earth. because Unless it gets Heat Wave, I, I don't know. Let's see what it does. So let's go into Silvera like so. There we are. Silvera comes in. They go for a Tailwind. Interesting. So it's a Tailwind team. That's pretty cool. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go for a um, U-turn. Because they can't really touch us. So they go for a Parting Shot. Which is actually going to backfire on them. And the Mirror Armor is going to come through. Which means it's not lowering any of our uh, attack special attack but they do still switch out from the parting shot so because we went for a u-turn we get to u-turn on whatever they bring in which is going to be very advantageous for us and i'm hoping it's the skeledurge it's actually going to be that thing whichever that is um the pikachu pikachu we get some nice u-turn damage on the pikachu which is great um is it static it's static of course it's static because it's the, it's the ash hat pikachu of course it is so it goes back to us I know they can use an ability patch on it, I think, to get Lightning Rod, but I guess that it worked out really nicely for them this time. So what are we going to do? We're going to go Flygon because it outspeeds. No, because uh, Tail winds up, so we can't do that. We can go Glimora. Glimora can come in and get some Stealth Rocks up. We can break that Lycan Rock Sash, potentially. And um, So we'll go Glimora. We'll get them Stealth Rocks up because I noticed they don't have a Hazard Clearer like, um, like Cody normally doesn't. So let's go for that Stealth Rock real quick. They do go for an Iron Tail. That's going to do a nice bit of chip damage to us. Not Nothing too fancy because, I mean, it is a Pikachu after all. Um, but we get that Toxic Debris, which is great. We go for that Stealth Rocks, which is also great. There we go. Now. Now what do we do? Do we go for the attack? I'm going to go for the Earth Power. Screw it. They probably go for another Ryan Tail, right? They go for another Ryan Tail. They do miss, unfortunately, but it wasn't going to take us out exactly. So Earth Power comes through. That should take care of the Pikachu. No problem. As there we go. Pikachu goes down. Cool seeing Ash Hat Pikachu, that's for sure. Definitely cool seeing Ash Hat Pikachu. So they bring Squawk ability back in. The Tailwind has petered out. They are probably going to get some Stealth Rock damage. Oh, wait, that thing's shiny. I didn't even realize until now. 
But um, they are heavy duty boots, which is good to know. So let's go for a power gem just to see how much damage we can do. They do terastalize the squawk ability. What is going on? This is one heck of a bonus battle, that's for sure. One heck of a bonus battle. They Terra Ground. That's actually perfect. Because it means Terra Blast will KO my um, Glimora. But it also means my pet, my um, Power Gem isn't going to do anything. So they go for that Tailwind once again. Because they know they can take a Power Gem, no doubt. As there we go, Power Gem comes through. Out of its backside. Does no damage. It does a bit of damage. Not too much, but a bit. Um, now what do we do? So let's go for a Earth Power. Just because why not? They go for that Terra Blast though. That is definitely going to KO... My Glimora as down it goes, I'm afraid. Unless we live. We don't live, though. It's four times super effective. We weren't living that. We do get another layer of Toxic Debris up, which is going to be nice for the Skeledurge and the uh, Gudra, for example. But we'll cross those bridges when we get to them. So now that they've terrored, I'm pretty confident in going into something else. I'm leaning towards the Pre-Marina. Because it takes hits for days. But I'm also leaning towards the Infernate for the close combat. Um, but they are Tailwind, so we need something that can take hits for days. I think Flygon's a good switch here because um, Flygon, Flygon's a good switch purely because it's immune to Terra Ground and it's not really too threatened by its other attacks. So we could go for a Scale Shot here or we could go for an EQ. I think I'll risk the Scale Shot missing. So they go for a Brave Bird, which is definitely going to do a lot of damage. It does half damage, hurts them with Recoil. We go for the Scale Shot, though. That is definitely going to take out our good old Squawk Ability right there. As down it goes in three hits, which is amazing. So Squawk Ability goes down. I really like this guy's team. I think it's really cool. Like the Pikachu Ash Hat. I forgot they were even in the game. I'm going to have to use them at some point. Because I want to draw a cool, a cool thumbnail for it. In comes the Cloritzer now. So it's nice and shiny, which is cool. I like shiny Cloritzer. It gets poisoned. And it gets some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great. So what do we do here? Do we go for another Scale Shot or do we switch out? I'm, I'm leaning towards the Pre-Marina. I think Pre-Marina... We need to get Pre-Marina in to do some work. Pre-Marina actually wrecks their entire team now. Now that the Squawker building the Pikachu are out of the way, it wrecks them. Because the Pikachu probably had Volt Tackle, right? Since it was Iron Tail. They go for the Dragon Pulse. That's not going to work on good old Pre-Marina, I'm afraid, of our Fairy Typing. And now we can go straight for a Moonblast, which should do a lot of damage to the Claw it's there. Um, the team's Tailwind did Peter out as well, which is great. So let's go for that Moonblast. There's no real reason not to. So they withdraw the Claw it's there. What are they going to go into to take a Moonblast, though? They might be expecting an Energy Ball as well. They go Skelly Dirge, which is a very interesting switch, because we could just switch our moves and go for a Sith, but we could be Assault Vest um, Choice Specs for all they know, which is probably why they've switched in. Um, but they do get hurt by Stealth Rocks, and they get poisoned, which is great, so they're not heavy duty boots. We go for a Moonblast. Decent bit of chip damage to the Skelly Dirge, and the Poison's going to kick in, which means that that Skelly Dirge is on Death's Door right now. Um, so now, I think Pre Marina basically wins this game for us, potentially. Potentially, that, that Chloris is probably choice specs. So they go for an Earth Power, which is going to sting, but not too much, because we're a Salt Vest after all. They are Life Orb, which is interesting. Life Orb, Skeledurge, everyone. That's that's a new one on me. Um, but Skeledurge just go down. Skeledurge just go down. No, but for real, like I I, I love seeing like interesting sets. It's like Life Orb. So that's a fully offensive Skeledurge right there. That's pretty cool, I will say. That's pretty cool. So in comes Lycanroc. This thing could put some damage on my Pre-Marina, that's for sure. Um, but we do get some Stealth Rock Chip and the Poison, so a potential Focus Ash is broken now, which is great. Um, there we go. So now we can just go straight for a Surf, and it should KO the Lycan Rock, but they probably weaken us to the point. Rock Slide, no way they missed that. They missed the Rock Slide. That would have definitely done some damage to Pre-Marina as down goes the Lycan Rock. So this is definitely like, I was leaning towards Pre-Marina in the thumbnail for the first game um, versus Fana, because Pre-Marina did put some pressure on then. But this game, the bonus battle, is where Pre-Marina really go comes to shine. It's dodging moves. It's hitting Pokemon for really hard damage. In comes the Gudra. Let's see how much damage Gudra takes from a Moonblast. Bear in mind, we're not choice specs. And this thing's probably a Salt Vest or something. So um, they do get poisoned and they do get the Stealth Rock Chip, which is always nice. And then we'll simply go for a Moonblast and just see how much damage it does. And there we go. They go for a Sludge Bomb. Which is going to do some nice damage, but our Assault Vest makes it so we take it really well. They are Life Orb, which is interesting. Moonblast comes through, and that nearly takes out the Gudra, but it is at the point where Poison will finish it off, which is great for us. So now, Clawitzer could potentially come in and finish Pre-Marina off. And like I said, I'm guessing that, that Clawitzer's Choice Specs, by the way, it switched out after it got quote-unquote locked into Dragon Pulse. Um, so we're going to get some Stealth Rock Chip on it, which is always nice. 
and then we'll simply go for a moon blast because I'm pretty confident we can live a hit from this thing unless it's like I don't know we outspeed anyway because Chloris is slow we don't get the KO they go for a water pulse probably their best move to hit us with because it usually carries like dragon pulse aura sphere ice beam dark pulse stuff like that and they all don't do well against Primarina but the Chloris goes down to the poison and that is going to be the game so we had a little bit of support from Glimora with the poison there poison finished off the Gudra and the Chloris are there which is great but um, GGAG, that was a pretty fun one. I really liked your team, and that was a great bonus battle to show off Primarina's power. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to. Use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all the wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.